Nowadays, many people still judge you. They will judge you based on what they see outward rather than on what they say inside. But it's up to you on how you are going to handle it. Remember, after a very long day, only yourself you can rely on. You cannot please others. It's just a matter of acceptance and courage to face the world. Walk out brightly and put a beautiful smile on your face. And remember, never ever dare to compare yourself to others because it may only lead you to adequacy. She was homely. A very broad forehead gave her face an unpleasant masculine look. Her eyes, which were small, slanted at the corners and made many of her acquaintances wondered if perchance she had a few drops of celestial blood in her veins. Her nose was broad and flat and its nostrils were always dilated, as if breathing were an effort. Her mouth with its thick lips was a long straight gash across her face made angular by unusual big jaws. But nature as if ashamed of her minions in fashioning the face molded the body of unusual beauty. From her neck to her small feet, she was perfect. Her legs with her trim ankles reminded one of those lifeless things seen in the shop windows, displaying the latest silk stockings. Hers was a body men would gladly have gone to hell for. People look at her face and turn their eyes away, but they look at her body and were enslaved. They forget the broad masculine forehead, the decent mouth, the aggressive jaws. All they had eyes for was that body, those hips, that had stolen the curve of the crescent moon. But she hated her body. She hated her body because it made men look at her with an unbeautiful light in their eyes, even married eyes and single eyes. She wanted love, but she did not want the love that her body inspired in men. She wanted something purer and cleaner. She was disgusted and hurt, for men told other women that they loved them. Look into their eyes to the soul's minute, their voices low and soft, their hands quivering with the weight of their tenderness. But men told her that they loved her body with eyes that made her feel as if she were naked, stripped bare for her sinful eyes to gaze upon. They told her with voices made thick by desire, touched her with hands of fire that seared her flesh, filled her with scorn and loathing. She wanted to be loved as other women were loved. She was as good as pure as they, and some of them were as homely as she was. But they did not have beautiful bodies, and so they were loved for themselves. Deliberately, she set out to hide from the eyes of men. The beautiful body that to her was a curse rather than a blessing. She started wearing long, white dresses that completely disfigured her. It took quite a while to make men forget that body that had once been their delight. But after a time, they became accustomed to the disfiguring dresses and concluded that she had become fat and shapeless. She accomplished the desired result. For there came a time when men looked at her and turned their eyes away, not with the beautiful light of former day, but with something akin to petty mirror, petty for a homely face and a shapeless mass of flesh. After some time, she became rebellious and became reconciled to her fate. She turned to writing to while away the long nights spent brooding all alone. Little things, little lyrics, little sketches. Sometimes they were heartthrobs of a woman who wanted love and sweet things whispered to her in the dark. She sent them to papers which found the little things acceptable and published them. And then he came into her life, a man with white blood in his veins. He was one of those who believe in the inferiority of colored races. But he found something unusual in the light, ironic and terrains from the pen of the unknown writer.
not in the little lyrics. He thought those were superfluous effusion of a woman belonging to a race of people who could not think of writing about anything except love. But he liked the light airy sketches. They were like those of the people of his race. One day, when he had nothing to do, he sent her to encourage her a note of appreciation. It was brief, but the first glance showed her that it came from a cultured man. She answered it, a light, nonsensical answer that touched the sense of the humor of the white man. He asked to see her, to know her personally. Letters were so tantalizing. Her first impulse was to say no, but she consented. They would have to meet sooner or later. The first meeting would surely be a trial, and the sooner it was over, the better. white man coming from a land of fair, blue-eyed woman, was shocked. Perhaps he found it a bit difficult to associate this homely woman with the one who could write such delightful sketches and such delightful letters. But she could talk rather well. There was a light vein of humor, faintly ironical at times, in everything she said, and that delighted him. He asked her to come out with him again by the shore of Manila Bay. He forgot that he was a white man. Then she was a brown maiden, homely and to all appearance, shapeless creature at that. Then he woke up from the spell and, as if ashamed of the outburst of confidence, added early vaguely. Then she smiled. I did not mean that you did not seem to care much for your convention. No thing in the world would go up and with a man, a white man, and that. One can very well afford to break convention. The body reminds, reminds her if she does. That is one consolation of being happy. Ha ha ha! You have a bit some very quiet idea. Should have. If I didn't, the body would notice me with my face. My. my figure. But I like you. I have not come across a more interesting girl for a long time. They met again and again. Thoughts, pleasant thoughts began to fill her mind. Had she at last found the one who liked her sincerely? For she liked her that she was ready to believe. Why have you been hiding such a beautiful figure all this time? I did not know it was beautiful. I knew it. It is not polite to tell a young lady she is a liar, so I won't do it.
the rest of of something else After they talked, we visited a little chapel by the roadside where naked man nailed to the cross looked at them with eyes which held at the tragedy and the sorrow of the world for the sins of sinning men. She gazed at the figure feeling something wrong and incomprehensible staring within her. She turned to him for sympathy and found him staring at her body. I, I love yes I love you your body I'm sorry for what you have just been polite like other men the man from the west realized that he had wrong and he felt sorry there was a world of regret in the eyes and with a weary smile she passed within <laughs>